Hyatt Hotels completing its acquisition of London-based travel platform Mr. and Mrs. Smith. The service offers direct booking access to a collection of over 1,500 boutique and luxury properties. Separately, Hyatt recently announced its new Hyatt Studios brand. That is the company's first upper mid-scale extended stay offering in the Americas. Joining us right now to talk about this and much more is Hyatt Hotels CEO Mark Hoplamazian. And Mark, it's great to see you. Thanks for having me. So let's talk about a few things. First of all, these two uh, new offerings, Mr. and Mrs. Smith and the new extended stay, one's for Andrew, one's for Joe. <laughs> yeah. That's break. right. Um, why the strategy of going in both directions? We have, uh, over the last five years, really focused on building luxury. Um, so our luxury portfolio has doubled uh, in terms of number of hotels around the world. Lifestyle has quadrupled and a lot more resorts. We've tripled our number of resorts over the last five years. So we've really moved our portfolio more into the high-end travel, uh, traveler base. And Mr. and Mrs. Smith is dead on to that. And one of the reasons we were so interested is they have a dedicated, loyal customer base. So we're looking to extend more uh, experiences to that customer base. We also own Miraval, which is a very high-end well-being, destination well-being uh, brand. Um, so that, that's been underway for five years. But we have a massive amount of white space in the United States. We don't participate in any markets like the type that Joe goes to potentially. But if you're driving, if you're like, if you're driving, if you're driving, if yeah, you're on the you interstate or you're right. suburban markets and so forth, we we don't have anything to offer there because our the brand that is uh, maybe the lowest price point is um, too high rated for a lot of those markets. So the extended stay market has been on fire for the last uh, year and a half, and we found an opportunity working with developers to enter that market. So that's what we've done. With, the, with this move, I mean, some people looked at this and thought, this is a way to make sure um, you're better insulated if there's a downturn in the market. Is, the, is that the case, or is this just being everywhere? Well, actually, you know, it's interesting. I think uh, there's a lot of talk about recession, but um, <clears throat> when you look at the high-end traveler and households of $100,000 or higher in, in household income, um, they are more inclined to travel in their, this is a survey that was recently done, more inclined to travel than ever before in the next six months. And that category of people are expecting to spend 10% more in this summer travel season than before where every other income uh, level is actually expecting to spend less. So I think we're somewhat insulated already, but it is true that um, extended stay and, and mid, upper mid-scale, which is the segment that we just went into with Hyatt Studios was the first to recover in COVID. We, we spoke with Tony Capuano yesterday from Marriott. And he, his point was that it's really strong, you know, doesn't see any weakness anywhere, but also said that for at least some of the discretionary people, you only see about 21 days out. What's, what's your length of time that you can say, hey, this is an incredibly strong market and we see nothing but strength? Uh, so there are different categories of business, but leisure bookings into the summer are running about Low double, sort of low double digit above last year, but 30% above 2019 levels, so really strong. And um, group business, large groups, mostly corporates, are booking through the end of the year into next year, into the following year now. And big associations are booking out to 2025. So we have a pretty good handle on the leisure market into the next season and the group market. The one that you can't really tell is business travel. Individual business travel is, a, is much shorter term. Um, it's the smallest segment in our business, but it's, it's been improving pretty steadily. Um, I'm still not sure individual business travel is going to return to pre-pandemic levels by the end of this year, though. And that's just because people don't have to go back to traveling the same way? You know, there's a big dichotomy. Small and medium-sized businesses, they're back on the road. It's the larger corporations who have, I think, a lot of people who are um, sitting around worried about recession and starting to sort of game plan what they're going to do in a recessionary environment and travel is one of the things that they turn to. So I think that there's some element of that that's going on that's sort of factoring into travel amongst large corporations. The, uh, the Marriott midsize is called Mid-X Studios. They haven't is, named it yet. Yeah, they haven't, but that's their code. That's yeah. the, the name. It also includes studios. I know. I told Tony yesterday, yeah. I was on stage with him at the NYU conference, I said, Tony, just to be clear, studios is already taken. Yeah. <laughs> but he, didn't, he, he didn't care. And, and I and do H know. Hilton also announced the new brand. They haven't actually named theirs. And I said to both Chris, Chris Nassetta was on my left and Tony was on my right. And I said, guys, 
Studios is taken, sorry. <laughs> yeah. I, I got a question. You mentioned Hilton. Yeah. Um, the company that owns the property, uh, the Hilton property in San Francisco on Union Square, I don't yes. know if you saw this yesterday. Yes, I did. Announced that they are going to purposely default on their CNBS loan. Wow. Uh, because they think that the city, and, and by the way, there's another hotel that they own as well. Two. Yeah. Two hotels. Yeah. They're going to, they're, they're basically defaulting on the loans. They're basically getting out of the San Francisco market because they're worried about crime in the city. They're worried about tourists in the city. They're worried about people going back to work in the city. And basically, they're, they're effectively saying, long term, we don't believe in San Francisco. And I, I, when I saw that, it, to do that sort of voluntarily, I, I mean, I thought to myself, is this the end of San Francisco? What do you think? Well, you have a hotel there. We have many hotels there. Uh, we don't own any hotels there, but we are paying You're attention to this. Right. Yeah, we are uh, quite a few. And San Francisco is has been the weakest market to recover. Uh, Becky mentioned Nordstrom pulling out, which was really a re right. that was a re reverberation. People were shocked, um, and I, I think that there's a need for really significant reform quickly. It's also true that I don't know enough about right. that particular situation because, you know, oftentimes these, especially with CMBS, right. you end up with pretty complex debt structures and sometimes, you know, there's, you have to position yourself to renegotiate. Yeah. And that, so there's, there could be something like that going on, but it is unambiguous that the, weak, the market is weak. It's one of the weakest recovery markets in the country.